right, Jolly. This butterfly is your garden. butterfly garden, In right? a butterfly garden. Yeah. And look what a thug we have <laughs> in the aster, the uh, fragrant aster, the aromatic aster. It likes it, right? It, you know, this it is a raised bed. It's got yeah. loose soil, so it is being, you know, taking, trying to take over. Sure. So we got to keep it under control. Okay. Um, so we'll dig some of it out right. and have room. And one thing I want to notice that, you know, the butterfly bushes come back yeah. every year. The uh, sedum has come back every year. Our oregano has come back every year. And we have kept our parsley because look, this year some of it's going to seed. So that keeps generating the same plants that the caterpillars and the butterflies yeah. can eat, you know, and, and get nectar from. But let's, first thing we need to do is get rid of the excess. <laughs> aromatic aster in here. That it is, that it is. So I will start doing so. This aster has very long tubers that come out and roots and, and sections of rhizomes that come out. And then they just say, oh, there's a soil surface. And then they come out and they just keep multiplying and multiplying. And sometimes you don't get all of this root. Uh, so it will start coming back again. You just got to keep up with it to, to keep it under control. You're going to come across some roots, I mean, some, some rocks. Those rocks? I'm trying to move the go. rocks. There you go. Thought they got it. <laughs> there it is. All right, well, we've got it mostly contained. Yeah. I'm going to let you, we've had to take out some of the soil, so we need to put some soil back. Okay. Right, looks good. Now we're ready to plant. Before we do that, let's put a little fertilizer down. We'll keep away from that. It doesn't need any fertilizer. <laughs> no, it does not. But the rest of the stuff could probably use a little bit and what we plant new. We'll need a little bit. Okay. And it's like I said, it doesn't take a lot of fertilizer. We have some, we have some large echinacea. Yeah. That we have a perfect spot for now. Yeah. We'll place our Menarda here. Yeah. And we have two cone flowers. Yeah. We can space them back here. I know you can't always see them from the front, but they will look nice back here. And we have some pentas left over that we will plant in the front here next to where we're gonna put the uh, hmm. butterfly bush back. So will the pentas attract butterflies? Pentas will attract butterflies okay. and uh, bees. Okay, so all your and pollinators? Other pollinators. Good. Now the Echinacea and the Rudbeckia are especially attractive to butterflies because they are flat mm -hmm. and the butterflies have a better place to land and, and collect nectar. Uh -huh. And even hummingbirds will like uh, the Menarda and the Pintas, but butterflies like those also. Good deal. Reds, oranges, yellows, the bright colors attract uh, butterflies more than some of the other colors. Okay. So I let's like put this uh, nice landing spot for them to take yeah, care. Give them a place to hang out, right? Give them a little place to hang out, yeah. some minerals. Just a little tanny. Right? Yeah, might need to yeah. mix up our sand a little bit here, and because you want it to you want it to retain water, because that's how they get the minerals out of it. We'll set it here. Okay. And we'll take our rocks. Place them around. Oh, look at that. It's just like a puzzle. Pretty good. So they'll have a nice place to land, sun themselves, and then get a drink of water. Good place to get some, some minerals. 
mm. out of the sand and to to sun themselves on the rocks and then probably now that this is not wood and it's gone we've gone to these these uh, cinder blocks they'll probably sit on the edge of this also oh. they like to sun themselves and I guess we're ready to plant yeah these are fairly large we'll move this one out of the way so we can plant this one first and you see it again these are large containers you can keep a hold of them but you squeeze <laughs> the pot around all sides so that it gently comes oh, out of the yeah. container and we look at the root system and this is very nicely rooted not a whole lot of uh, things to move out of the way again get rid of some of the circling roots so that the roots will go away from the plant and we will plant this uh, perennial no higher than the top of this root the the soil in this container you don't want to bury the crown of the plant so we'll dig a nice hole for this the uh, topsoil in those bags were slightly different from the yeah, topsoil that is decomposed in the ground so we can mix them together and everybody will be happy it's a little mixing Yeah, you want to, want to measure the container with your shovel and see how deep it is Let's and see if you're uh... Hey. That's pretty good. Hey. I'm learning. Now we can set this in here. Hey, look at that, folks. And we'll put some of the soil back around it and up to it, but not over it. Let me get it off these rocks right here. Now we've got one planted, and then we'll plant the next one, same okay. way. Same way. Yeah, you're right about that. Nice. And again, we've got some nice roots, a little bit of circling. We'll just take that out, make so it'll go straight, and we will set it down. Good okay. To you? Yeah, looks good. Yeah. How we'll plant these two rudbeckia? They'll bring some nice yellow to the garden. And again, we want to take the yeah. that out, yeah. and we just squeeze the container. And oh, ah. look, that's a lot of circling roots. <laughs> so we'll we'll fix that. Um, I would prefer to cut these. I don't have a sharp knife. Let's see if this will work on it. Yep, it will. I would prefer to do this with all these circling roots because what will happen once I do this, these roots, as you can see here, are going to start coming out towards me and away from the plant center and it will stop all of this circling. Again, they'll, it'll keep coming out, and it'll stop all that circling, and it'll, it'll, it'll grow away from the plant like it was trying to do in the first place before the container stopped it. Again, we'll plant it no deeper than the soil level that we have here, mm -hmm. and we'll dig a hole, incorporate some of the existing soil with what we put on top. Plant it at the soil level depth, but no higher. And now we have this Monarda. Monarda is a butterfly and hummingbird magnet. Pinks and reds. This one is raspberry, so it'll be a, oh, one in the red family, so it's gonna be really pretty over here. Again, we're gonna move the soil out of the way, incorporate some of the existing soil with what we put on top, nice and loose. Mm -hmm. That's why this butterfly garden has done so well. We, it's, it's got some real dirt in it and some amendment, and it's, and it's just really drains well, and uh, the plants like that. All right, so this is gonna, gonna be, be interesting because if you look here. Oh my. Yeah, I have yeah. a feeling we're gonna have the same problem. Yeah. So we'll see. We might have to do a little diggling to get the roots off the yeah. bottom of that. There it goes. Ah, well, it's not as bad as I thought. Bad. No. 
that is not too bad and for this one I wouldn't cut this I would just simply uh, just move out the roots because it seems to be only at the base of it that it has a problem so I would just cut those a little bit with our fingers just pull them out I'm going to break that so that it goes both ways so it'll go away from the center of the plant there we go. Can I tell you something else I like to do too, Joel? Mm -hmm. I always like to look and make sure you don't have any weeds on it. Oh in my there. goodness, that's a good idea. Weeds going in there. Very good idea, because it happens a lot. It happens a lot. They, you, you know, nurseries can't get everything, because there's the wind carries a lot of plants a lot of places. Again, we put the soil back up around it, but not quite over the top, but close to it. And then we have a couple of these uh, pentas. These were root brown too, so we had to move the roots away from them. Didn't take much to, cut, no. to do that. So it's nice and loose. Yeah. And we do have some extra vinca that are annuals, and the pentas are annuals. Um, we'll put those in just for some extra color, because the more color you have, the more attractive it'll be for something flying by. And we can always replace the annuals, but the, the core perennials will be here. And this, this guy that would stick it over, this uh, aromatic <laughs> aster, it will bloom the last of all of these plants. So we'll have a succession of blooms throughout the season. All right, well, Joel, thank you much. Can't wait to see what it looks like later this season. You're welcome. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please click the subscribe button below.